Greetings, beautiful earthlings. My name is Star. If you are new here, I don't know how you found me, but I am super glad you did. And if you're returning, y'all, the real MVP, you already know. So I just want to point out really super quick that I am having lots of technical difficulties today. So as you notice, um, we're upright and it's kind of because I had to put my bed on the floor. Uh, the baby's starting to roll around a whole lot. And I don't want her to fall off the bed. So I put the bed on the floor and I used to prop my stand thingy up on the bed frame and now I don't have a bed frame. So you're propped up on a plastic dresser. It's not holding up too well. That's why it's all angled. You know what I mean? And also if I look this way, you'll see this spiral in my glasses. That's because my TV is right here, like right next to me. And the video that I use for 852 Hertz frequency has a big spiral on it. So um, usually they they go black after a while, but this one I've noticed does not. So I feel really bad if you guys do see that. It's very distracting. I'm going to try not to look that way. But um, also I did chop my hair off. I don't know if you guys can really tell because of the black background, it's not too sunny yet, but my hair is doing all kinds of weird flippy flippies right now because it's very happy that it's healthy again. So I got my cute little ponytail, I'm very excited, but um, I think that's all I had to say to get that out of the way. So you guys are joining me for the fifth Meet My Tarot Decks episode. I'm so excited and if you guys are new here, this series was started by uh, a video I watched by the Chaotic Witch Ant. You might have known her from TikTok. She has now come to YouTube and she did a video called Meet My Tarot Decks where she introduced her tarot decks, their personalities, and their call-out ratings. I, however, did not think it was fair that she crammed all of her tarot decks into one long video because they do have such different personalities and I have so many decks. So so I decided to make a series out of it. So if you guys ever want to watch those other ones, there is a playlist for you called the Meet My Tarot Deck series. And I do always link the Chaotic Witch Ants video in the description of each of these videos so that you can always reference that if you would like to. So we're going to do something a little bit different today. I don't know. Um, I think I might have said it. This is 852 hertz in the background. That's because 852 hertz heightens your intuition. So what I wanted to do today is actually walk you guys through the entire start to finish process of doing this interview spread. Because I have had a lot of people in our group actually utilizing the spread now and having questions about what to do if the excuse me, if the card definition doesn't quite match up for the question and how to analyze that and whatnot. So I thought that I would go ahead and show you guys start to finish how to do this. So you are gonna get the whole raw shuffling process and all of that. So if you guys have not done this yet with your decks, if you've been watching these and you're a little bit too nervous to do it with your decks, I mean, we've got a lot to do. I've got more than 12 tarot decks, I think. So um, you guys can always jump in a couple of videos from now and try to do it with me, but I think that this might help you guys a little bit if I show you how to do the process, okay? So if you guys are starting from absolute zero, doing this interview process for your deck, First of all, I would suggest having a deck that you are bonded enough with that you can hear or have a good intuitive bond with. So I don't do this spread with brand new boxes right out, I'm brand new decks right out of the box because I don't have a good bond with them, I can't hear them. So decks like my Golden Thread, my Game of Thrones, and my Biddy Tarot are all gonna stay shelved for a little while until I can get a good connection with them to be able to do this spread. So I actually decided to do this one with you guys with my uh, oldest deck, my tried and true Vanessa Tarot. So here's the back, here's the front, of course I put my star card there and if you guys have been with me for a while you remember what I've said about my Vanessa Tarot. This was my very first tarot deck gifted to me by my friend Morgan uh, about three years ago now and um, we've done lots and lots and lots and lots of readings together. She helped me learn tarot so I thought that this would be a good one to be able to hear for you guys and I will link where you can get this deck in the description box as well as my review of this deck because I don't want to go into reviewing things. This might run a little bit long. Uh, hopefully it doesn't go over 30 minutes, but y'all know sometimes it do. So I'm going to try my best. <laughs> but let's go ahead and get some coffee together, friends. 
so sorry we're tilted. I'm gonna have to like reinforce the plastic with something. I'll figure it out. I promise I'll iron out the details. I feel so bad because I can see how like tilted it is. <laughs> we'll get there y'all. We'll get there. Too early for me to figure all that out today. I woke up real early so that I could get some videos done and um, hopefully before I start getting interruptions and I can do readings later. But if you guys are starting from absolute zero, I suggest getting yourself a handy dandy notebook so that you can keep track of all of your decks if you're like me and you've got multiple decks instead of just one. If you've got just one, I mean, a piece of paper or your phone will do. But if you're like me and you got tons and tons and tons of decks, I definitely suggest keeping a notebook or I mean, if you keep a log on your phone, I don't think that'll interfere with the process any. So, if you guys remember, this is a six card spread. I did find this in my group. Someone had posted it and I screenshotted it, but I didn't get the OP's name and I feel so bad because I've been using her spread so much. And then also our admin, Brittany, has turned it into a uh, graphic. So we've been sharing it around the group a whole lot and we just have no idea who posted it. So here are the questions if you guys want to pause that. I don't know if you can read my handwriting. But this is what I use. Okay, so if you guys are familiar with this, it's a six question spread and I do take the bottom of the deck after I get all of those cards, which makes it seven cards. So the first question is, how will this deck help me with reading? Second question is, what frame of mind should I be in to ask you questions? Third question is deck strengths. Fourth question is deck weaknesses. Fifth question is what is the best way for us to work together? And sixth question is a message for me about working with you. And then seventh is the bottom of the deck overall energy. So um, I'm not going to be writing all of this in here because clearly that would take too much time and I don't have editing so I can't speed it up or anything. I can't do any cool editing with it. So this is my Vanessa Tarot and I did not know this was called the Vanessa Tarot for a long time. So I just started referencing this as the Vanessa Tarot as of late and she really liked it and she said I like, I like Vanessa, it works. So. That's what we're going by. I didn't get any cool like cards coming out for her or anything. This is what she goes by. I did initially do this spread a while back with her, never analyzed it, ended up deleting the picture. So that's why I decided to redo it with you guys on camera today. And we are going to be using the Labyrinthos app. So if you guys do not have the Labyrinthos app, it is super, super handy for you to plug those cards into the reading and get those definitions for you. That way you don't have to flip through the book all crazy. So I am going to show you what this looks like when you open the Labyrinthos app. I know it's very distracting to see the phone in the reflection, but try not to look at that. <laughs> so. Here's what it looks like when you go to the home screen. You get all the your old readings and whatnot. So you're gonna click this new readings here. Since we are using a six card spread, I'm gonna go over to my custom. And I do believe these moon spreads, three, four, five, I guess not, they're five. So let's, I know there's one. There is a Celtic cross somewhere. There we go. So clearly we're not putting this in the Celtic cross spread, but since I'm using seven cards, this one does have enough cards that I can just throw those in there without having to go back and change the spread a million times. So that's what I like to use. It's kind of a nifty trick. You don't have to look at the questions that are on top. Just look at the card definition itself. And this is a lot, a lot easier for me to do than referencing that book 40 million times or constantly looking up definitions on um, like either Labyrinthos .co or biddytarot.com. So I will link all of Labyrinthos information in the description box for you guys. And from that website, you will also have the link to the app download if you can't find the app uh, just by navigating your own Play Store, okay? <clears throat> all right, y'all, let's get started. I'm super excited. So like I said before, um, when I write the spread initially, I do write down a little note about how we first bonded. And at the very end, I do write in any additional notes. So for the first one, I would write, um, you know, this is my oldest bonded deck. And 
she chose the name Vanessa. I'm sorry, I just had, I just realized I actually should have this spread already in my phone because I have done this quite a few times. So let's go back to my custom. There we go, see? Tarot deck introduction. Boom, look at that, six, seven cards. I know you can't quite see that yet. And then you do hit this little thing here, hit input physical cards. So you can make your own spreads on here and I did do this, it already has the questions in there as well. So I'm so glad I just remembered that because that would have made it a lot harder for me. So let's go ahead, open up to this question page. So you guys already know, she female. This is Vanessa. If you guys have a deck you don't have those answers for yet, I would definitely suggest bonding with them first to get that information, their name, their gender, if they want to give it to you. Let's go ahead and get a good shuffle here. I'm sorry, y'all. That was the tower. Every time I open you guys to a deck, it's always the tower. I feel so bad. I didn't mean to do that. But since this video might run a little bit long, if you guys do want to put it on in the background, just kind of glance over every once in a while or just listen to it, you can totally do that. You don't have to see the cards. You guys already know what this deck looks like, but I know I feel really bad when videos run super long and I can't speed it up or edit it or anything. So I hope that this helps some of you guys who have been trying to do this spread with your cards and aren't quite getting it or feel like some of them don't resonate the right way because we have run across these problems um, already. My aunt and I, we do this with all of our decks, so whenever we get a card that doesn't quite make sense, we kind of run it by each other like, how does this work? How does this make sense? So, trust me, we have hit all the snags. <laughs> so, let's go ahead, ask for first question. So how will this deck help me with reading? Okay, so how will you help me with reading? How will you help me with reading? How will you help me with reading? One card. Thank you. And we got the Knight of Wands here. I used to do the reversals uh, for this spread. I don't anymore. It takes way too much time to try to analyze the reversals. So I just take the cards as they come out. I know that might help somebody as well because the reversals sometimes are a big pain when it comes to this spread. So let's go ahead. Second question now, what frame of mind should I be in to ask questions? What frame of mind should I be in to ask you questions? What frame of mind should I be in to ask you questions? What frame of mind should I be in to ask you questions? Um, I hope I did tell you guys, I did a good Palo Santo smudge on this before we started. I know I said it, I've already restarted this twice. <laughs> what frame of mind should I be in to ask you questions? Oh, oh. What frame of mind should I be in to ask you questions? I see you trying. But yes, I do smudge my decks with Palo Santo usually. Did run outside really fast and smudge them and the reason why I'm gonna be doing a lot of shuffling is because sometimes if you see those cards are really trying to jump and they can't quite just mix them up again it's just like a reading sometimes they need a little renewed boost and also sometimes you're like me you're talking too much or you're thinking too much and your decks kind of like what do you want me to focus on Okay, so what frame of mind should I be in to ask you questions? What frame of mind should I be in to ask you questions? What frame of mind should I be in to ask you questions? What frame of mind should I be in to ask you questions? Come on, girly. I see you trying. What frame of mind should I be in to ask you questions? Thank you. Oh, that's interesting. Five of Cups. That's very interesting. And as you notice, I do just pull all the cards before I do the analysis, otherwise it would take way too long. So, uh, what is your strength? So I say strength, I know that the question is deck strengths, but that has happened to me quite a few times where we'll get like three or four cards at once because the deck is like, girl, you know I got all these strengths. So what is your strength? What is your strength? What is your strength? Oh, oh. Mm. 
So sometimes this happens and one of them makes a little bit more sense than the other. And I will just throw it back to see if this comes back out again because I did get two of them that time. And like I said, one makes more sense than the other. So just like that five of cups there that I need to be in the frame of mind for. That's really interesting to me. Okay. All right, girl. What is your biggest strength? What is your biggest strength? What is your biggest strength? Thank you. That makes sense. Hi, Priestess. All right. Three. All right. What is your biggest weakness? Thank you. Oh, that's interesting. Wow. All right. Um, what is the best way for us to work together? What is the best way for us to work together? What is the best way for us to work together? Oh, oh. <sighs> too many. What is the best way for us to work together? Why, thank you. Oh, see, that makes sense. She's giving me lots and lots of cards right now. Ugh. But this one that flew out over here is Temperance. She cute, she's a little bartender. Okay, I don't know why bartender's Temperance. Oh, alchemy mixing, okay. <laughs> um, a message for me about working with you. Message for me about working with you. Message for me about working with you. Come on, girl, one card, what? Which one flew out? All right, I'm putting them back. So as you guys see, this is a very big trial and error process. I don't want you guys to think it gave me three cards for this answer. I need to do all three cards or this one doesn't quite make sense. I need to sit here and figure this out for the next three days until it makes sense to me. So I want you guys to understand that um, putting it back does not mean you messed up or anything. If that card is meant to come out, it will come back out. Trust me. That happens all the time when you put a card back in, especially if you do this all the time with your own readings and you're like, I don't quite like that card. I wanna take out another one and then you take, you put it back in, it comes back out. So trust me, you guys, putting that card back in does not mean you've messed up or anything. It just means it didn't quite make sense to you or something. So if the deck is adamant about that card, it will come back out and then you just gotta analyze it from then on if it does come back out for you. Okay. One card, please. Message about working with you. One card. 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 Thank you. I will take it. Kitty. Three of Wands. All right. And then what is our bottom? Oh. I have coins. Okay, so now what we do here, we take our coffee because it's still very early. I think I'm almost out of coffee already. All right, so get your Labyrinthos app. And um, if you are like me and you can just very easily figure all of this out and you make your own custom spread and you do that tarot deck introduction with seven cards there and you put the questions in there, um, I might have to actually do a video walking through that one day. But anyways, so it's already there. First card, you click on it. It gives you all of these cards you can pick through. Plus you do also have this filter cards here. So you just type that in at the top. For this one, we got the Knight of Wands put that in there. Second card, we got five of cups. Not 55, five of cups. Third card, high priestess. Fourth card, seven of coins. Pentacles. 
I always forget that coins are pentacles. Um, what is this fifth card? Temperance. Actually, temperance is right here. I don't even need to type that in. Sixth card is three of wands. And the seventh card was five of coins. <laughs> five of pentacles. Okay. So now that we've got our cards in here, man, I'm sorry for all that glare. See, we got our cards in there. So you can go ahead and click on the card. The question will pop up if you have put the question in there. So this one, how will this deck help me with reading tarot? It gives you the card, the keywords, and that definition. So it says uh, the Knight of Wands. Person of action represents manifestation of an idea and the passionate pursuit of a vision. Because this person's highly focused on action, he can also be brash, impulsive, and unrealistic. So how will this deck help me with reading tarot? I would say... Um, hmm. I'm going to use fearlessness because that's one of the key words. So this deck will help me with reading tarot through fearless manifestation of an idea and passionate pursuit of a vision. <laughs> so that's why I look these up because sometimes there are really good words in there that you wouldn't have gotten just by using the keywords. I'm gonna have to go back through and watch this later and write all of these down. Second one, what frame of mind should I be in to ask you questions? We got the Five of Cups. So this card signifies the despair and sadness associated with loss. Three of Cups are overturned, but two of them are still upright, indicating that there's still a chance to salvage what has been lost. So the frame of mind I should be in to ask questions, I'm going to say, hmm, I'm actually going to say hopeful. Hopeful to... I really don't like the whole loss and grief and disappointment thing. Hopeful of salvaging what has been lost, right? As I looked at the clock, 2222. Okay, we'll go with that. Third one, deck strengths. High Priestess, we have Intuition, Unconscious, and Inner Voice. I don't think I even need to read that card definition. I'm just going to go ahead with that one for deck strengths. I do get that a lot for deck strengths, which is interesting. But we'll just go ahead and say Intuition, Inner Voice, works. Deck Weaknesses, Seven of Pentacles, which is Hard Work, Perseverance, and Diligence. And I think that I did also get this one for my Radiant Joe, because he, he an old man, and I remember I was laughing really hard that his weakness was hard work. So Vanessa might actually feel the same way. And I'm just going to go with it. Because I haven't used her in a long time. And she does have very tired energy now. I did used to let a lot of people shuffle the deck. Um, back when I was first learning tarot, I didn't realize that it affected the energy of the deck. So I used to let a lot of people shuffle through her. And I feel like that that might have affected her energy. And now that's why I don't use her very much unless someone picks her because she does have very tired energy. So I'm going to go with this hard work, <laughs> hard work and diligence as her weaknesses. Um, temperance is the best way for us to work together. So patience, Middle path, finding meaning. I think that works perfectly. I don't even need to read that. Uh, six message for me about working with this deck. We got the three of wands. So that one says, looking ahead, expansion and rapid growth represents the transformation of dreams into concrete plans and preparation for action. As you look forward to the possible obstacles in your path, you remain dedicated to your pursuit and ready to traverse your boundaries. So I like that one. It does go along with one of the other cards. Um, I can't remember which one anymore, but that sounds right. So a message for me about working with this deck, I will say represents the transformation. No, 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 no. Message for me about working with this deck, uh, transforming dreams into concrete plans, preparation for action. Uh, looking ahead. Oh, okay, I got it, I got it. So for this one, I would say, as you look forward to the possible obstacles in your path, you remain dedicated to your pursuit and ready to traverse your boundaries. That's a good message. 
And then for the seventh card, which was bottom of the deck, five of pentacles. So the overall energy of this reading is actually need, poverty, and insecurity. That's why I was very confused about that one. So it says a time of need and desperation sometimes signals difficulties with one's relationship to money. But this card also signals that there is help available if one chooses to see and acknowledge it. So usually for that bottom of the deck energy, I'll just write that out because that's the energy. So there's nothing you need to... Um, Oh man, I should have saved that spread in there. There is nothing that you need to really um, decipher in the bottom of the deck. That's just what the overall energy of the read was. So whether that was your overall energy or the deck's overall energy, that's what that was. So man, I should have saved that. Guys, save your spreads. If you put your spreads in there, like, if you take the time to put the cards in the spread in Labyrinthos, don't do what I just did and delete it. <laughs> Save it as, like, your, uh, so I would, I would have saved it as the Vanessa deck spread intro. That way I can always reference it. Um, but now I'm gonna have to go back and watch the video to get that definition. So, um, <laughs> I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was kind of a little bit of a dumpster fire. I'm glad I did keep it under 30 minutes though, so that's cool. But I will try and get a second one out today. I want to try to get, um, my... Man, which deck is that? It is my universal. Okay, so I'm gonna try to get... No, 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 no. Oh yeah, Joe's the Radiant. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna try to get my Universal out. And um, I hope that these get a little bit easier in the next couple, like in the next week, hopefully, I'll iron out all of the details of the troubles that I'm having. So I am I know I usually try to keep this upright format for deck uh, reviews, but we'll figure it out, guys. I'm really glad that you stuck around with me. If you made it to the very end, why don't you comment a butterfly emoji for me or a heart or a thumbs up will work so <laughs> if you guys like this video give me a big thumbs up if you didn't like this video that's cool thumbs down you don't have to like my video and um i already told you go ahead put a butterfly emoji or tell me you made it to the end and if you guys have started trying this with your deck yet or if you plan to so if you guys don't already know i do have an amazon wish list for tarot and oracle decks so if you do see a tarot or oracle deck that you really like that you want me to review you can go ahead and send that deck to me and sign the gift receipt and I will plug you and your socials every time I use that deck and if you don't want that I will just give you the shout out and if you don't want that you can remain anonymous and just enjoy the video so if you do see a deck that you really like that I don't have on there you can feel free to DM me on Instagram and tell me to add that deck. So if you guys are not following me on Facebook and Instagram, all that information is always in the description box for you guys. Um, Facebook is where you guys can book a reading with me and Instagram is where all the fun stuff happens. So Instagram gets spoilers and you guys get to see my plants over there. And um, it's a good time on Instagram, I have lots of fun. So if you guys ever want to chat and get to know me, you can do that over on Instagram. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I mean, we're gonna keep going. I got tons of tarot decks to do this, this spread with. And hopefully by the time I catch up to all of them, I don't have any new tarot decks, but as we have seen on this channel, that doesn't happen. They just keep coming. So <laughs> we'll figure it out, y'all. I hope you guys have a beautiful, wonderful day wherever you are when this video reaches you, my friends. And I can't wait to see you in the next one. Namaste.